ಓಂ ಸದಾಶಿವ ಸಮಾರಂಭ ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಓಂ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಏಟೀನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ಯೋಗ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಡೀಲಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ಸ್ where krishna has divided each of them into sattva rajas and tamas uh, today's opening speaker will be dr sandhya dr sandhya please hari om shri gurubhyo namaha uh, in the last class in the earlier verses we saw that what constitutes work is three factors knowledge action and the actor and each of these have a threefold classification further of sattva rajas and tamas but what is the driving force so to speak of these three factors is two other factors one is understanding that is buddhi and the other one is uh, fortitude or dhriti so buddhi we saw in the last class the three types and uh, the next three verses actually describes the three types of uh, dhriti or fortitude so chanting the verse dhritya yaya dharayate mana pranendriya kriya ha ಯೋಗೇನಾವ್ಯವಿಚಾರಿಣ್ಯಾಸ್ವಿಚಾರಿಣ್ಯಾಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಸ ದಟ್ parta o parta satvik is satvik so the meaning of this verse is o arjuna satvik will is that by which will which is made unswerving through yoga one sustains the activities of the mind the prana and the sense organs so the satvik will power sustains or holds the spiritual sadhana that is dharayate at the level of the sense organs mana prana indriya kriya the sense organs of knowledge and action so swami param says that for spiritual success clear intellect alone is not sufficient we need a strong will power too human beings are born with they have a free will and krishna himself talks about this in these three verses it is so easy to blame destiny and be fatalistic but between birth and death there is a lot that dhriti can do and uh, so what is this dhriti according to swami chinmayananda there is no correct english equivalent for the word dhriti many people have described it as steadiness consistency fortitude and all put together is a shade less than what it actually means so it is actually the power within ourselves by which we constantly see the goal before us and uh, i'd like to actually quote dr swami chinmayananda on this because it's so beautiful he says dhriti paints the idea it maintains it constantly in our vision it makes us strive towards it steadily and when obstacles come in the way it is this dhriti that mobilizes all the secret powers within ourselves to face them courageously heroically and stoically so this is called fortitude or dhriti and how can we harness this dhriti only through yoga using the mind and the key word in this verse is avyabicharinya unswerving focus undeviating focus and the practice of yoga using the mind to control the senses so when we faithfully contemplate upon ourselves the mind becomes steady not audible for us dr sandhya so you couldn't hear anything in between your voice disappeared can you just sum up what you said till now the last part just maybe okay, about so what i minute. said was yeah yeah so uh, this dhriti is uh, that which we which helps us 
hold everything constantly in our vision. It makes us strive towards it steadily. When obstacles come in the path, then it is this dhriti that mobilizes the secret power within ourselves to overcome this and face it very courageously. So how do we harness this dhriti? Only through yoga. And the key word here is avyabhicharinya. So that is the undeviating focus. And by the practice of yoga, using the mind to control the senses. When we faithfully contemplate on the self, then our mind becomes very peaceful and we are satisfied and becomes steady and we can control the senses. And in any field of our activity, if we develop this kind of avyabhicharinya, then we can make incremental progress to achieve this satric dhriti. Hari Om. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sandhya. Through your explanation, our idea of Dhriti became a little more clear. There is no English term or English equivalent for that Dhriti, which is more than dil power or fortitude. And uh, uh, what is Sattvic Dhriti? You have nicely explained. We will go to Dr. Sandhya Nanjundaya. Dr. Sandhya Nanjundaya, please. Hari Om. Yayatu dharma kamartham dhritya dhara yater juna prasangena palakangshi dhritya sa partha rajase. From sattvic, we come to the rajasic way of the will. Now, let us remember that the rajasic idea or a rajasic person has got a main goal in his life is that he thinks that he is a person, the world is real, and all his happiness and satisfaction can come from only worldly objects. He has very little amount of long-term spiritual thought and very little amount of sadhana as part of his life. And because he is so convinced that he is the body and mind and he is living in society, all his focus of the rajasic person is only towards gaining worldly objects and sensations. How does he do it? By the use of dharma, kama, and artha. Dharma, of course, is the legal way of doing things. He works very long, very hard, and therefore gets a lot of name and fame. He also gets a lot of wealth. And from this, he can buy very many things and again, get a lot of publicity and satisfaction from the world. And of course, karma, that is desiring many sense objects, which are therefore also fulfilled by the way he goes. One thing to remember that a rajasic person is extremely active and therefore he is constantly striving for his end. And this is explained or also emphasized by Lord Sri Krishna over here. And he says that dharyate, he pursues, unrelenting pursue, constant pursue of his goals, prasangena, because of the attachment, not only to the activity, but also to the results and Halakanksha, he is very much attached to the results because this is the only way he is going to get material happiness and success and mental satisfaction. So because of this type of mental activity, he is always striving and striving in the world and he does not have much of spiritual goal ahead of him. Now, the Rajasic way of living has got two benefits and two disadvantages also. What are the disadvantages? Well, if he is unable to get anything from dharma, he goes to the adharmic ways and may fall a little bit lower. Or he may go into the tamasic ways and just lose interest, become disillusioned and so on. But the rajasic person, because of his intense activity, mental and physical, can also have a very good advantage in again two senses. First of all, he can become more sattvic because he understands that all material happiness is only very temporary and can only get him into more and more desire. So he starts more sadhana and he becomes more sattvic. And secondly, the amount of karma that he does is also a function. He becomes a karma yogi, chitta shuddhi or mental purification can occur because of the amount of haram that he has got or fruit of action. So this may propel him up spiritually and this will make him more sattvic rather than rajasic. So the rajasic will is something where many people are situated and of course it is one way to go up and this is the advantage of being sattvic. Again Swami Paramatthananda says about the free will 
and those of us who have rajic rajasic will should definitely try to strive more and more for their spiritual upliftment hari om thank you thank you dr sandhya for a very clear explanation of what is this rajasic will now once we know what is rajasic tamasic and satvic there is a possibility that when we look around people and especially the successful people around there is a tendency of people to claim that i am self made i have this i have this and there may be a subtle ego within us to say oh this is rajasic and this is tamasic and what i am is satvic now this is the danger of the so called spiritual wisdom spiritual wisdom we are blessed to have but let us not use this for as uh, dr sandhya said can we move from rajasic tendencies to satvic tendencies but let us not sit in judgment to say that we are more spiritually evolved than anybody else now that will be the wrong way of understanding let us see this mainly for the trait in us uh, if aruna can explain what is this tamasic driti hari om ययम स्वप्न भय शोक विषाद मदमे च न विमुंचति दुर्मेधा धृति सा पार्थ तामसी द बेसिक ट्रांसलेशन इज फॉर दिस इज दिस ओ अर्जुन द तामसिक विल इज दैट बाय विच अ पर्सन ऑफ नो डिस्क्रिमिनेशन डज नॉट गिव अप स्लीप फियर सॉरो डिस्पैशन एंड इंडल्जेंस this is the third verse describing the um, tamasic will power or the tamasic firmness the tamasic driti this tamasic will power manifests in various forms of behavior which have been described by uh, by the lord this tamasic will power is that by which a person desperately avoids karma or that itself is a kind of will power and such a person uh, holds on to several um, factors which are listed by the lord here first of all it is uh, the first thing they hold on to is swapnam you can even call it laziness swami parmathananda says that such a person does not act in this world but only dreams he daydreams building castles in the air such a person has only two avasthas sleeping and sleepy so swami ji says now this is not good so swami ji says that even if someone doesn't need to work they should work in order to have chitta shuddhi swapnam na vimunchati they do not give up daydreaming swapnam in this sentence means daydream because uh, night dreams is somebody everybody has next bhayam na vimunchati a person of tamasic will power does not undertake anything because of fear of failure such a person does not like to take chances and he wants only success all the time swami chinmayananda says that a person of tamasic driti will have a fear of the future which may not really happen but it destroys the equilibrium and balance and peace in a person's life this is a fear complex and such tamasic people hang on to these complexes very tenaciously thirdly a person of tamasic will the lord described is very sorrowful given to shokam since such a person is not a doer and does not have a karta personality the bhokta personality comes up the one who faces experiences which causes cause sorrow and is unable to sort of rise above them so swami param says that activity is the antidote for sorrow and anxiety but the tamasic person refuses to be active and is lazy and every experience becomes a source of sorrow and such a person complains all the time next the tamasic person does not give up vishadam or depression lack of motivation all the time in a low mood no mood to do this or that now mood has no logic so therefore there is no motivation to do anything and the sense organs are not even active shankaracharya calls this avasana avasana bhava a person always low in a low mood the only activity that such a person of tamasic dhriti is capable of is madam or addiction that is sensory addiction it could be an addiction to smoking drinking or whatever and nowadays of course we have in, enough of these kind of sensory addictions which are available in the in the world nowadays so a tamasic person has no goals most important he does not have a dharma goal an artha goal or a kama goal he has no goal so he has this goalless addiction going on the intellect is used to support this addiction so such a person who has these qualities of laziness fear depression 
uh, is called Durmedha by Lord Krishna. Such a person is called foolish or stupid by Shankaracharya. This is a perverted intellect which argues in favor of these qualities and they can influence others also. Such a willpower, O oh Arjuna, is actually tamasic. Now Swami Chinmayananda says, human beings should have some goal or the other to work for, even a relatively worldly goal, so that from the tamasic willpower or fortitude, a person can go to the rajasic willpower, have some material goal and start activity to counter the tamas. Once there is a goal, a person can have a goal of dhanam and then the gradually a, a goal of jnanam and moksha. So the shift from tamasic to sattvic willpower itself should be the goal. Haryom, thank you. Thank you, Aruna, for a nice explanation on the tamasic dritti. The next topic is about sukham. We come to the last of the six topics about the various types of sukham. Dr. Aksha, please. Shri Gurubhyo Namaha. Krishna introduces the seven topic in this verse. Just as the Lord classified Jnana, Karma, Karta, Buddhi and Druti one after the other, he now undertakes to classify Sukha under the three headings. Sukham Tvida Neem Trividam Shrunu Me Bharatar Shabha Abhyasa Dramate Yatra Dukhantam Chanigachati Bharatar Shabha O oh, best among Bharatas, Idani me shrunu. Now you hear from me. Trividam sukham. There are three kinds of joy. Yatra abhyasat ramate. In which or through, through the practice of any service to God, this sadhaka revels or he finds enjoyment and dukkantam nigachati and reaches the end of sorrow as all of us know every human being craves for happiness our craving for happiness is not a learned desire it's an instinctive one swami paramarthananda says with regard to choosing the happiness there is no choice but the choice is regarding to the type of happiness here in this verse, Yatra refers to the supreme bliss attained by a sadhaka, whose mind is perfectly serene, as described in verse 27 of chapter 6. Prashanta manasam henam yoginam sukamuttamam. This type of joy is experienced only when a man withdraws his attachment from all enjoyments of this world and the next, taking them as ephemeral. And Abhyasat, he practices constant meditation, adoration and service of God. He is able to concentrate his mind in God, the embodiment of eternal knowledge as identical with him. And Ramate, his mind then begins to revel and enjoy in that state. Such a person gets rid once and for all of all kinds of suffering. Dukkantam Nigachati. This suffering could be arising from his own body or mind. Suffering is said to be threefold, physical, mental and spiritual. Physical arises from disease and discomfort, mental from the karmic seeds of the past evil actions and spiritual from the inability to contact God. In this verse, Lord Krishna addresses Arjuna as Bharatar Shabha literally meaning bull of Bharatas, the best or the most excellent of the descendants of the Bharata dynasty. One who has attained the highest realization through fortitude. Lord Krishna defines Sattva Rajas Tamas Sukha in the next three verses. Hari Om sir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Raksha. That was a nice introduction because this verse is only introducing the three types of Sukham. Vasumati, Dr. Vasumati, please. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Yatad Agre Vishamiva Pariname Amrutopamam Tat Sukam Satvikam Proktam Atma Buddhi Prasadajam Tatparya 
Sattvic happiness is said to be that which is like poison in the beginning and is like nectar in the end, which is born out of clarity or self-knowledge. Krishna here defines Sattvic Sukham as pure spiritual Ananda. Ananda that one can derive from following a spiritual way of life. Not at the end of the journey, but even as one travels, there is Ananda. Right from the level of Karma Yoga, there is Ananda. At the level of Upasana, there is Ananda. When Sadhana Chatushtaya Sampati is developed, there is Ananda. And the beauty is that this Ananda comes from inside. One does not derive this Ananda from external sources. In fact, such a person does not go after external sources of joy, for he alone knows what this unique inner Ananda is. The height of this Ananda is Atmagnana Janya Ananda, which is born out of sheer knowledge of one's true nature. The sheer understanding generates a fullness, generates a peace, peace that is beyond all understanding. This reminds me of what Swamiji always says, self is the only source of peace, security and happiness. And the glory of that Ananda is, knowledge is never subject to loss, money, position, relationships go away. But knowledge-based Ananda is lifelong. Therefore, Krishna calls that as Sattvic Sukham. He says, Atma Buddhi Prasadajam. Atma Buddhi means Atma Gnanam. Here, word Buddhi refers to Gnanam. Prasada means tranquility. And this Prasada is the result of Atma Buddhi. Thus, Atma Buddhi Prasadajam means tranquility of mind born out of self-knowledge and this tranquility generates ananda. We know ananda comes from atma because atma swarupam is ananda. The atma ananda manifests in a calm mind. Krishna gives a warning also here. It is a great ananda, no doubt, but you have to work hard to gain it. It is not easily attainable. One has to go through a long winding spiritual sadhana, starting with karma yoga, which is nothing but reduction of sakama karma and increase of nishkama karma. Thus, karma yoga has to start with purification of mind. Then one has to go through upasana, turn the extrovert mind within and then attain the values of amanitvam, adambitvam, ahimsa and shantihi. Asuri Sampath has to be weeded out and Daivi Sampath has to be carefully nourished and nurtured. It requires a committed life. It's an uphill task. Therefore, it will appear painful initially. But if one remembers the goal, it will not appear as painful or we may even begin to enjoy the pain. Like people going to Kailash Mansarovar Yatra, freezing temperatures, risk of landslide, low oxygen levels, vagaries of weather, high cost, all these problems exist. But still, why do people undertake this yatra? Because they see that they are going to get what at the end, what they are going to get at the end, which makes them tough to face all these hardships. For those of us who have undertaken this journey, we appreciate the fact that the experience has been for our lifetime. Similarly, if we see the advantages of this ananda, we would not mind the hardships but one should be aware of that ananda. Therefore, Krishna says, Agre visham iva. This spiritual path appears to be poison in the beginning. Here, poison means painful because it involves discipline. Spiritual accomplishment or growth is not automatic. It requires efforts. But what is great thing about it? Pariname, that is at the end of it, tat sukam, that ananda is amrutopamam. It's like amrutam or nectar. This Atmananda is called Sattvic Ananda, which is the choice of an intelligent person. I would like to conclude quoting from Swamiji's last week's talk on Viveka Chudamani, where he says, by invoking my true nature, my super vehicle status, life is converted into a blessing. Life is a glory and it is natural for me to be joyous. Hari Om. Thank you, Dr. Vasumati. This is a very beautiful verse and very nicely, completely explained. Very poetic how to convert poisons into nectar. And certainly all the joy comes from Brahma Vidya, uh, which is of the nature of true happiness. That is Sattvika Sukham. Uh, Vidya will tell us about Rajasik Sukham. Vidya, please. Hare Krishna. 
ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ವಿಷಯೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಸಂಯೋಗ ತತ್ತದಗ್ರೇ ಮತೋಪಮ ಪರಿಣಾಮೇ ವಿಷಮಿವ ತತ್ಸುಖಂ ರಾಜಸಂ ಸ್ಮೃತ ರಾಜಸ ಸುಖಂ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರಾಜಸಿಕ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಸ್ಮೃತ್ ತತ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದಟ್ ಯತ್ ತತ್ ಅಮೃತೋಪಮ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ನೆಕ್ಟ ಅಗ್ರೇ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ವಿಷಯೇಂದ್ರಿಯ ಸಂಯೋಗ ಆಂಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಂಡ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ಗನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಯಾರಾಫ್ರೀಸಿಂಗ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ರಾಜಸಿಕ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದಟ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ನೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಪಾಯ್ಸನ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಎಂಡ್ ಆಂಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಾಂಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ಗನ್ಸ್ so just uh, this is the inversion of the earlier uh, verse lord krishna defines rajasik as all those pleasures which are born out of sensory contact here vishayendriya sanyogat vishaya means sense objects that is shabda sparsha rupa rasa gandha indriya sense organs sanyoga contact we have five sense organs and the world consists of sense objects that is sparsha shabda rupa rasagandha and because of their association ananda is attained which is called samsarga bhoga but lord krishna wants here that this contact is not permanent and therefore contact born pleasure is also not permanent this will go away and when it goes away there are two problems one is the vacuum which is generated and the other is the depression or sorrow of the outcome of this loss these are the inevitable consequences of rajasik sukham agri amritopamam agre here means in the beginning amritopamam means like nectar here swami paramarthananda gives the example of cassettes of music of our favorite subject in the earlier stage we listen to it so regularly but as time goes by we even forget that we had possessed such a cassette with us he even brings in the reference of the law of diminishing returns by giving the example of an ice cream one ice cream when offered is very tasty so it goes on 2 3 until 20 at the end it is even the thought of it makes the person so nauseatic that he runs away from it here lord krishna tells us that even if one enjoys the sense objects all the time one cannot hold it permanently as kalam or the time concept brings in a separation so sanyoga because of kala and vyoga also because of kala when vyoga comes it is going to be painful and the pain will be directly proportional to the pleasure that the objective pleasure gives here we can recall arjuna's pain of losing bhishma drona etc in the first chapter therefore lord krishna says parinami the consequence of all the sensory pleasures is visham eva it is like poison this momentary pleasure appears as agreeable to us only because of our attachment to sense objects which binds one and thus this attachment is a form of rajoguna therefore a spiritual seeker should not allow himself to be enticed into the trap of this type of delight without any spiritual backup if i totally depend on the world it is certainly samsara sat sukham rajasam smrutam such a pleasure is rajasam sukham so lord krishna tells us to give up rajasik pleasure when not given up we can have them but with satvik ananda as a backup swami param here gives the example of a mischievous monkey as a punishment monkey is given a vessel with a small neck which is fixed to the ground with groundnuts inside 
monkey inserts the hand inside the vessel and takes the fistful of ground nuts but it cannot take out its hand then the owner of the monkey sees that it is in the trap and teaches him a lesson by thrashing him properly so we have to avoid being like monkeys we have to either drop attachment or prepare to get the thrashing to recall the fifth verse of the sixth chapter as an answer to this rajasik uh, sukham uddharit atmanam natmanam avasadaye atmaiva yatano bandhu ratmaiva ripunatmanah we should learn to lift ourselves by our own efforts and should not lower oneself ethically for the self alone is the friend of oneself and the self alone is the enemy of oneself hari om thank you doctor thank you thank you vidya for another very nice explanation we had a very good set of six ladies who made a very nice presentation on all the topics that have been allotted uh, when we look at rajasik satvik and tamasik we should remember all these are there within us but let the pro pro proportion be more of satva satva less of rajas and to avoid tamas as far as possible so this particular verse which says can we move from vishayananda to atmananda and with that we come to the end of today's presentation and if you are ready for the quiz and uh, the quiz today as i said we will now start preparing chapter wise so that uh, we will know that we have about 30 verses to prepare or 30 or 34 verses and so we will uh, do a good revision so today's uh, classes will all be questions will all be on the seventh chapter of the bhagavad gita a quick recap the seventh chapter is the turning point the shatkam changes and krishna without any question from arjuna declares that i will tell you my true nature i will declare let you know my para and apara my higher nature and my lower nature and he says whatever you can see and experience is my lower nature or apara and the one that is seeing through all of us is the higher nature uh, here also he explains why we have samsara because we invest too much on the apara or again the solution he gives us through bhakti bhakti can be sakama or through nishkama how do we develop bhakti bhakti is developed by seeing god in and through everything vibhuti yoga comes in the 10th chapter but we have vibhuti starting right from 7th chapter we will see in the form of various questions now ahalya are you there if you can read this verse for me otherwise i will read it no i'm there sir please read प्रमेयम अपरेयम इत इतस्त्रम अन्यम प्रकृतिम विद्धि मे परम जीवभूतम महाबाहो ययेदम धार्यते जगत ऑल राइट नाउ आई विल आस्क यू टू आंसर just i'll tell you what we how do we go about we हैव सर्टेन ब्रिलियंट पीपल हियर लाइक सुकन्या रमा सुंदर so i would ask those who are uh, who have all the answers ready to be ready as a backup now this others can open uh, if you can remember where this comes of course it comes from the 7th chapter and i will tell you the verses the 5th verse already now by looking at this there should be some idea what is krishna trying to tell can somebody volunteer to tell me what is the crux of this particular verse any one person consciousness is what is sustaining the world all right go ahead continue and uh, here krishna is talking about the lower prakriti okay and uh, how it is different from the higher prakriti and uh, the jiva the lower prakriti jiva being part of the lower prakriti and the consciousness is the higher prakriti all right some slight corrections to be done otherwise uh, many good points anybody else would like to improve on this other than the top 3 or 4 uh, who may have silenced <laughs> anybody else that is okay. okay. 
Okay, Sukanya, you can tell us. Yeah, uh, Jiva Bhutam. This is the Jiva in all, all the beings. Mm. Uh, that that is the one which sustains the entire universe. Okay. Uh, this. So I manifest my my apara prakriti is also my manifestation. All right. Okay. Anybody else open to anyone else for one more level of improvement? The Bhautika Prapancha is formed hmm. by the elements. Okay. So all the eight elements. Okay. Co combined form the uh, form the uh, apara prakriti. Okay. Good. Good. Um, actually, a first in the first in the sukshma in the Good. in the avyakta yeah. in the avyakta form we have the akasha avyakta akasha and all those eight things all right. including uh, the plants and then annam and purusha all right. so that is the combin what that all is right. the part correct I, I could hear dr sandhya saying this is the mahavakya now i'll go back to sandhya dr anupama we'll stop here for now i have accepted what you said dr sandhya uh, can you tell me where is the mahavakya here mayeva sakalam jatam is that's true but how prakritim you... vidhi me param prakritim vidhi me param yeah prakritim vidhi me param mm, no i Even don't the dharayate the dharayate is the Correct. Yeah, exactly. My eva sakalam jatam comes here. Where does it come? Yeah, yeah. Them dharayate jagat. Yeah. Who is the Who is the one who's sustaining the whole world? Can you tell me? Ishvara prakriti. Para. Para prakriti. Okay. See, jiva, the consciousness within all of us. Remember, you, each one of you here, is the sustainer of the whole world. Can you believe it? This is the Mahavakya of this Jiva Bhutam. So initially, somebody had made a mistake by saying Jiva Bhutam is Apara. Jiva Bhutam, the Jiva principle or the conscious principle within all of us is the one who sustains the whole universe. Remember one thing, it is true. When you wake up in the morning, the world is born for you. When you go to sleep, the world is asleep for you. It is our consciousness through our body mind which sustains the whole world. Now, the first line is the it is part of the previous. Dr. Anupama was telling Aparayam, there are there's Ashtamurti Shiva. Can who can tell me who is the Ashtamurti Shiva here? Five elements, and after the five, five elements? Buddhi Ahankara. No, Buddhi Ahankara. No. After yeah. five elements comes the Oshada, Jeeva, and Purusha. Jeeva, Jeeva. Unmundal human beings. The plants, the food, and Purusha. No, no. After see, Ashtamurti no, Shiva is the sun, moon, and human beings. Absolutely. Sun, the sun, moon, and human. The sun, moon, and human. All the beings. So. Uh, you have the five elements, then the elementals, which is the sun and the moon, and all the beings. This is the Ashtamurti. It, all of them come in this chapter, and you have to see them all as the vibhutis of the Lord. Now, we can go for word meaning. Aparam, iam, itam. Okay, for want of time, I will go. I will just tell you, this is my inferior part. But in addition to this inferior energy, lower part, with the no my param, the higher part, which is the jiva bhuta, the jiva in all of us, the living beings, is the manifestation of my higher self. Uh, and that the higher self is the one which is my eva sakalam jatam, is the one that is sustaining this whole world. Ahalya, if you can read this uh, for us. According to our scriptures, matter and energy are inert and therefore inferior. Consciousness is a changeless principle. Krishna declares that his higher nature is other than matter and energy. It is beyond scientific study, observation, and physical and chemical laws. Everything that can be observed and experienced, the world, the body, and the mind, is constantly changing. Even the space is expanding. The changeless paraprakriti PP that Krishna calls Jiva in this verse, his uh, higher nature is the observer or the experiencer. Continue. 
this verse is important because it contains the equivalent of the mahavakya tatvam c krishna declares that the entire inert world is sustained by this pp consciousness or life principle the body is sentient when it is blessed by the life principle similarly the whole cosmos is held by the intelligent principle the consciousness the world is functioning as though it is a human body that is why we look upon the universe as a cosmic person so thank you so we have seen one mahavakya question is can you give me one more mahavakya in bhagavad gita one more mahavakya in this no in the same chapter is there ha sutra manikaneva sutra manigana where is mahavakya there in each of us anatma the atma principle is there okay i agree I agree. So, Nagana Eva is uh, okay. Mahavakya. I am. I am Atma Brahma. No, I want in the Bhagavad Gita. I want one more Mahavakya. The eighteen chapter Tatvamasi. Where is Om the? Tatsu eight, tatsu there is no Tatvamasi. No, no, no. No. Fifteenth, fifteen chapter, sir. Fifteen chapter, which one? Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. Those are Mahavakyas, no. but it is in the no, Bhagavad Gita. No, no, eighteen, the eighteenth verse, that. Uh, I am looking so, for. I am. It's in the eighteen chapters. So Doctor Sachin explained it. I can't. That is seventeenth uh, chapter. Om, Om Tat Sat. Om Tat Sat. Fifteen chapters, sir. Huh? Uh, no. Uh, uh, I am. I am not aware of anything in the fifteenth chapter. Clearly, we have discussed this many times. Thirteen. Yeah, thirteenth chapter. Tell me. Shetra Shetra Gnam Chapi Maam. Shetra Gnam Chapi Maam Vidhi Sarvak Shetra Shu Bharata. That is a Mahavakya. There is one more. Tattara paratharam nanya kinti dasti dhananjaya. May sarvam. Accept that. Yeah. One more. One more. Okay. This will be answered on Wednesday. Okay. We'll keep it for Wednesday. Now, Ahalya, please read this. Ahu nam janma nam ante jnanavan maam prapadyate. वासुदेव सर्वम इति स महात्मा सुदुर्लभः क्वेश्चन ऑल राइट वी विल नो दिस इज फ्रॉम द 7th चैप्टर एंड आई विल गिव यू व्हाट द वर्स इज इट इज द 19th वर्स नाउ व्हाइल लुकिंग एट दिस वर्स वी शुड गेट वन सेंट्रल मैसेज अदर देन द ब्रिलियंट फ्यू द रेस्ट ऑफ अस ओपन टू ऑल ऑफ अस Quick, 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 quick! Vasudeva Sarvamiti. Hmm. Because of the punyam of many janmas, we get Correct. this. Um. Uh, uh, get this opportunity to get jnanam. Oh, very good, very good. In a way, we can see from all of us. All of us who are listening to this are so blessed because of grace of the Lord. Uh, Swami Anubhavananda tells us, uh, because of God's grace, we are able to get this jnanam. But here he is talking about who is Vasudeva here. What is Prapadyate? Infinite. Okay, I will allow the top three, four to open up and yeah. tell us. Vasudeva. Vasu is the infinite principle. Okay, Vasudeva means. Uh, Bhagavanam Janma Namante. At the end of many births, okay. one one realizes moksha is important. After one, after many births, one realizes. Uh, yeah, it requires many births yeah. for one to realize the value of moksha. All right. And, uh, uh, any further improvement? Uh, Hari Om, Hari Om. Atma Gnani, Atma Gnani. Okay, uh, Hari Om. Please, please, Hari Om. Go ahead, Kul Karni Aur. Uh, you know he is referring to the bhaktas, and uh, actually after the many births, uh, mm. he is he will be able to uh, attain me. Okay. Uh, Very good. Very good. He is speaking of artha artha ti jignasi jnani bhakta. How do you become a jnani bhakta? A jnani bhakta is one after so many janmas. and because of surrender to the lord he has discovered atma tatva and such a thing is extremely difficult to attain 
All right. This is the conclusion after Krishna has spoken about Artha, Artharthi, Jignasi, and Jnani Bhakta. And he says such. And uh, see, all of us are in that scale, and we are somewhere there. He's talking about us also. Bahunam, after many births, a person is able to become a Jnani Bhakta. And this has happened because of surrender unto me. And this is not easy to attain. It is very difficult to attain. Ahalya? Krishna admits that a person cannot go through all the four stages of bhakti in one janma. It takes time and maturity to even want jnana. The people tend to focus on problem on hand than on God. Example, hungry man needs bread and not Gita. There is nothing wrong in using Sakama Bhakti as a means to achieve material ends. However, one must evolve into a Nishkama Bhakta. This may take many Janmas. The current Janma for anyone may very well be the one for transition. At the end of many Janmas alone, one will value Moksha. Transitioning from religion to spirituality is itself a great achievement. Can you read the third line once again? Because this is a message for all of us. Ahalya? There is no, nothing. Third, third, no, no, third last line, the current janma. The current janma for anyone, the current janma for anyone may very well be the one for transition. So let us all make a commitment that in this life itself we will work for Purnatva. Continue. Ahalya? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm unable to see that. Just a second. Uh, at the end, uh, I will read. At the end, the seeker becomes a jnani after going through karma and jnana yoga. A jnani attains the Lord the highest because this gap uh, attains the Lord the highest because the gap between them is removed. He knows Brahman is everything and he is Brahman. Krishna declares that such a jnani alone is a Mahatma or a noble soul. He admits that such a person is indeed very rare and he has mentioned that earlier. What is that verse? Manushyanam Sahasresh. Hey, very good. Okay. This is Brahman the verse. Please read this verse, uh, Vinayakan. Manushyanam Sahasreshu Kaschidyadadi Siddhaye Yadatam Abhi Siddhanam Kaschinam Veti Tattvadaha. Can you explain? So among thousand people, only one or very few will be getting that moksha. And Yadatam Abhi Siddhanam Kaschinam Veti Tattvadaha. And only one will attain me in, in his fullest form. All right. Some more improvement needed. Anybody else? Among thousands who work on spiritual journey, yeah. only only a few, only uh, only one uh, comes to that siddhi. Okay. Siddha means uh, yeah, strives strives for spiritual yeah. nothing. And even among them, only one attains the knowledge. All right. See the first part. He is talking about us. Manushyanam Sahasrena Kaschid Yatati Siddhaye. Very few people put an effort in the right direction. That is all of us. All of us, according to Krishna, are those who are putting among the thousands and thousands, we become a minuscule who are put. Then this is the warning. Yatatap Yatatam Api. Among these people. Yatati means one who puts effort in the right direction and consistently. Yati means a sannyasi. That means from now on, if you make a commitment to make your effort in the right direction and consistently, then you will attain to Purnatva, Tattva Taha. So that is the Sahasreshu Manushyanam. Among the thousands of human beings, a rare one strives for liberation. That is all of us. Okay, we agree with that. Uh, even among those, very few come to know me in reality. Next verse, uh, can someone read? Yeah. please read? Mataha paritaram nanyat kistid kinchidasti dananjaya mai sarvam idam protam sutre manigana iva. All right, so we already know this is a Mahavakya. 
and uh, so that's what i wanted to bring up okay anything else other than what we already know this is a uh, vidya has explained this verse the cause and effect go there ahead tell no us no effect without a cause very good tell us what is that mattaha parataram nan nan being mm. the cause mm. the effect is uh, the effect can never be without the support of the cause okay kinchitapi there is nothing else which exists there without the mm. uh, karana mm. there is no karyam without karana i just as uh, a uh, thread supports the bead bead being the karana tatvam i exist in and through everything in creation all right your first sentence needs a little more clarity mattaha parataram na anyat that means there is nothing no you should be clear i i am the causeless cause see for everything there is a cause for everything there is a parent but i am the parent less cause that remember mattaha parataram for me mattaha for me there is no cause says shri krishna i am the um, can you give me one upanishadic sutra which talks about uh, this verse one word in the upanishads have you heard the word swayambhuhu yeah can you tell me which word, upanishad word swayambhuhu the upanishad correct what verse is that um god has made something wrong yeah our senses are outwards yeah. but yeah. it should be paranchikani paranchikani vidaranam swayambhuhan correct paranchikani vyatharnat swayambhuhu then paran पश्चसि न अंतर अंतर्यामी कश्चित दीरह प्रत्यक आत्मन आयक्षत सो समथिंग लाइक दैट ऑल राइट दिस इज अ स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड वन वी विल नॉट गो इनटू दिस ऑल राइट सो देयर इज नो कॉज फॉर मी रिमेंबर डॉक्टर अनुपमा यू बिगन वेल बट यू डिडंट कंप्लीट दैट फॉर मी श्री कृष्णा सेज देयर इज नो कॉज आई एम द कॉजलेस कॉज kinchidasti there isn't you know an iota of a cause as far as me is concerned then he goes to the next line he says but i pervade in and through everything in a invisible manner so now we should open our eyes to see kri sri krishna from now on the vibhuti yoga starts from the 7th chapter so dr ahalya can you read this for me so hum apsu hum apsu raso ओंकार Yeah. and the sound of akasha yeah. and i am the free will of mankind okay very good now why is this important in our daily life it means any achievement of ours is not ours but it's the grace of god from within all right see how we can realize we can realize atma tattvam or krishna tattvam in all this you know while you are having the taste of water the taste is krishna tattvam very good see uh, we, this is a preparation for vishwarupa ishwara darshana that you must be able to see each time you drink water remember shri krishna now when you see the brilliance or the light any light that you see remember shri krishna where when you hear a, a, you know pranava in all the vedas with the sound any sound that you hear and uh, dr anupama mentioned about this the can you give me the correct translation of this manliness in men the last one is literally translated as manliness yes. in men yes. but See, uh, that yeah how is what is it that makes a human being different from everybody else in creation a human being has free will which no other animal has and that is the distinguishing faculty of a human being so paurusha means free will 
not manliness, like it it is literally translated somewhere. Yes. So don't translate that. Remember that is free will. That is the so remember this every day. Whenever you drink water, remember chant this mantra silently. Raso ham apsukham teya. Otherwise, fairly simple, but I want to bring bring this to our daily practice. Okay, this is a little difficult one. Ahalya, please read for me. Daivi hesha gunamayi mama maya duratyaya mameva ye prapadyante maya metam tarantite. All right, please explain. Anybody? This is this upper this prakriti is. Uh, Sukanya, uh, no, uh, yeah. no, not you. Is anybody else? Mama Maya Duratyaya. It is difficult to cross over my Maya. Correct. Daivi Hesha Gunamayi. The um, that that is made up of the gunas. My my nature, which is made up of gunas, is difficult to cross over. Yeah. Um, but for those mame ye prapadyante for those who take shelter in me or who seek me maya metam tarantite i will be able to uh, get them out of this maya uh, to help them cross over samsara perfect i, I don't see where anything you can improve on it hmm? see that is why we have uh, samsara we are so caught up with this maya mohini the three gunas and we miss the para prakriti so taranti to if you have to cross over it is prapadyante to surrender to him that is what shri krishna says if you can read this for me yes mom oh, oh i'm sorry there is nothing uh, no notes on this it is fairly straight forward hmm? okay uh, yeah okay read daivi. this please esha daivi maya this divine maya mama of mine gunamayi which consists of three gunas he duratyaya is indeed difficult to cross over evate only those people ye prapadyante who surrender mam to me taranti cross over edam mayam this maya all right we'll come to the last uh, one for today uh, please read this naham prakashah sarvasya yoga maya samavritah मूडोयम नाभि जानाति लोको मामज मव्ययम नंबरी समवे सिमिलर टू द प्रीवियस वर्स या there is a key word called avrutah avrutah means to cover yoga maya cover what is the yoga avritaha. maya is covering what is it covering naham pavana yeah is nature lord's nature delusion naham the last line says you know i my real nature is ajam and avyaya avyaya so this real nature of mind which is unborn and which is cannot be destroyed is covered uh, this brilliance is covered by yoga uh, maya by the yoga maya and mudo i am see the foolish people those people who are not wise are not able to see me because i have been covered by maya yoga maya yoga maya yoga maya isn't it Okay, please read yes. the verse, uh, Ahalya. Word meaning. Yoga Maya Samavrita, veiled by my Yoga Maya, aham na prakasha. I am not evident. Sarvasya to all, mood ha be eluded. I am loka ha. This world na abhijanati does not know. Mam ajam who is birthless, avyayam mam avyayam and deathless. Please read. If consciousness is ever evident and pp, why do people prapratiti? Why do people miss the higher nature and run after the inferior lower nature? 
the desire for bhagwan darshanam implies that many are after the low, lower nature of god the material nature of god is always attractive because it is represented in the form of beautiful sound image smell feel or touch taste etc an average person being an extrovert gets attracted by these thus their thinking power is clouded krishna says that his higher nature is not evident to the extroverted and deluded to get interested in his higher nature one needs to acquire discrimination viveka the deluded one fails to recognize that the very source of fullness is within him the guru can show him how to find happiness within him he is so tempted by materialism that he doesn't have time for gurus and shastras by disowning what he has he runs after things externally so he is moodah om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyati purnasya purnamadaya पूर्णमेवशिष्यते ओं शाति शाति शाति